呃，台湾在面临的这个核能的这些内部的一些不一样的意见之后，再加上三一的辅导事件之后，台湾面临了很多新的必须做的一个选择跟面临的一个局面，必须去看待。第一个就是他们提到，就是那个独立电网到底可不可行啊？就是我们这种以前是比较集中式的这种发电方式，那现在有没有可能？往新的独立分独立的这种电网的方向来思考。第二个还是一个很大的台湾内部的争议，就是那个发电的成本到底是怎么来的。另外，他也提到就是啊，关于台湾的用电需求零成长啊，这种思维跟方向是不是一个可能的？其实我想再补一个问题啊，因为前前几天 Michael 也讲一个问题，我们听了也蛮蛮觉得从来没听过这样的讲法，就是说他曾经提到说新的核电厂。反而是一个气候变迁的一个解决方案，一个杀手啊！这个大家听着觉得蛮奇怪的啊，就是新的核电厂反而是一个可能是气候的杀手，就是在在台湾的减量过程反而可能并不是一个正面的事情，那到底是怎么回事？我也想请这个 Michael 可以跟我们分享一下这样的想法跟这个观点。第二个当然就是这个宣武主委提到的，就是这个呃这个核能安全这件事情，的确是在三一之后面临一个重大的一个挑战啊。那我们也想请这个呃 Michael 来分享一下，就是说他怎么去看待三一之后关于呃核能的安全啊这个部分到底有些什么样的发展？所以呃，我们就请 Michael 来先跟我们做一下他的一些回应跟说法。
that there are now, uh, uh, of the 12 reactors that were considered in the most seismic active areas, six are now in Taiwan. The other six, um, uh, most at risk from seismic events, were in Japan, they're shut down. That's very simple. People can understand this. People can also understand that those sites are by far in the area that is the highest, the highest population densities. So any kind of uh, uh, event with serious consequences would be practically impossible to manage. If I look at the, and I just looked at the figures again, it's like between nine and 10 million people in 75 kilometers radius. I mean, no other country has this in, in the world. That's not complicated. It's actually pretty straightforward, and one can take it into account, and I think one has to take it into account in making decisions in the area. Uh, very briefly on energy policy, I do believe that, and I've been trying to explain this in Congress where, where my presentation was a little different, but I, I think what the fundamental error in energy policy is, and this is true for all national energy policies, there's no model. My opinion. It's not to say, well, Germany does it right, or Denmark, or I think it goes wrong uh, everywhere. Because we're looking for uh, the supply security of kilowatt hours, barrels of oil, or cubic meters of gas. But you can't eat kilowatt hours. So it's not about providing kilowatt hours, it's about providing energy services. The energy service is cooked food. And you're, I totally agree with you. One key parameter is it has to be affordable. If we provide energy services that people cannot afford, it's good for nothing, right? So it has to be uh, uh, affordable. But it's the heat that people need, or the cooling, or the mobility, or the, the, the cooked food. It's not, it's not the kilowatt hours. And in fact, in a country which is 75% nuclear power, the country where I live, uh, four million households cannot afford to pay their energy bills. Four million households. They're energy poor. They have access to kilowatt hours, but they are too poor to pay for it. And they're actually, there are people dying in countries like France or the UK because they can't afford to heat their homes. It's not because they don't have access to kilowatt hours. They can't afford to pay for it. So we, we need to guarantee people the basic energy needs. And that needs a totally different orientation of energy policy. Uh, and the last point is on, on energy consumption. You know, uh, two days ago, the, the French uh, um, Environment and Energy Management Agency, state agents, came out with new scenarios for 2030 and 2050. Those are official French government scenarios. If you look at these scenarios, 2030, 2050, that imply uh, the current orientation of the government, which means reducing the share of nuclear power to about 50%. I, I roughly calculated it. it would mean shutting down 34 of the 58 reactors. 34 by, by at, uh, 2025 or 2030, depending on the time horizon you look at. But the key in the scenarios is a steeply declining consumption of energy. Steeply declining. So we're ending up in 2050 with something which is uh, it's not precise, but order of magnitude is an energy consumption maybe half, half, half of what we're consuming today. That's the government projection. Now, in the government projection, there's still nuclear energy, but there's very similar scenarios where <clears throat> nuclear power can be phased out. And both scenarios actually lead to a 80% reduction in greenhouse gas uh, emissions. The options are political options. Do we want to go this way or do we want to go that way? And when we talk, when we see what the, what the uh, uh, possibilities are uh, from a technical, eco economic, uh, socially responsible uh, uh, Aspect, the whole range of aspects we have to, to look at. I think it's it's a it's an issue of you know civil society debate to to uh, 
see which which way the society has to go. And that, that means also increasing uh, democra democracy levels, including in a country like France, by the way, which has not proven very democratic in the past in this area. Sorry, John. Uh that 比较简单、容易了解，这样我们翻译的朋友就不会太辛苦啊。哦，那个 Michael 也非常辛苦，他